Welcome everybody to my How She Did It Thriving Studio Owner Program interview series. I have been looking forward to this conversation with one of my newest graduates, Lauren, for weeks now. Lauren and I had a really great conversation several weeks ago about the incredible results she got in the 90-day program, my Thriving Studio Owner 12-week program. And so I'm absolutely thrilled to share and have her share her story with you of where she was before she program where she is now and really like giving you some sense of how she got here because she's had some some incredible breakthroughs and uh she has a very inspiring vision for her studio and i can't wait to share that with you today so for those of you guys who don't know me my name is lace and i am a forest yoga guardian mentor teacher for almost 20 years I am the owner and founder of Interstellar Pilates and Yoga Studio here in Berkeley, California. And I am also the founder and lead business growth mentor at the Thriving Studio Owner Program. And I want to welcome Miss Lauren, who is the owner and founder of Karma Tribe Yoga in Kansas City. She has two locations. And Lauren, I'll let you tell our viewers a little bit about your vision and your mission for your business and who it is that you serve in your community to so welcome sure thanks kiki um so yes i am the founder and owner of karma tribe yoga in kansas city missouri and we have two locations and we are a donation-based yoga studio um through the program we did shift the uh the model a little bit pricing wise but we're all at heart a donation based yoga studio and we serve a, a very young population between ages 25 and 35 for the most part and they're people who want to make the world a better place and they really love and align with our mission to create trauma-informed and accessible yoga opportunities not just for them, but also through our nonprofit, which serves um, many different nonprofit organizations providing trauma informed yoga to our community. Awesome. Thank you so much. I, I'm actually wondering if we could back up a little bit and just talk for a moment about why it is you started your, your yoga studio. I've actually never heard you really talk about this, but I know you were teaching in your community and really a leader in your community for some time before you started. So can you give us just a little uh, view into what made you decide to open your studio? Yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's a pretty interesting story, I think. Uh, I started it in 2015, so we just turned four years old. Before that, I had started a pop-up yoga program in my community, and it just really caught fire and took off. Uh, in ways that were not expected for me. Uh, it really started with just one outdoor class and it snowballed in, into something much bigger and much more powerful. And I wasn't really that interested in ownership um, before then, but I had started envisioning a permanent home for what we were doing because it felt so uh, different. There was, it was uh, such a diverse crowd and people were just really latching on to the energy of it. So I was like, okay, I'd like to eventually create a home for this, uh, maybe in five years. And literally a couple weeks later, this is Lulu, by the way, <laughs> literally a couple weeks later, someone had messaged me saying that they had a studio space where they were running a very small donation based operation out of, and that they had decided after a couple of months that it wasn't for them, but they had thought of me and had seen what I was doing and offered me this space for a very, very, very low price. And even though I did not feel ready at the time, I felt like that was as clear of a sign as I could possibly get um, from source or from the universe and really, you know, put a lot of hard work in, but a lot of things seemed to organize themselves around me in such a way that, that made it possible for us to, to start classes. Uh, we were in that particular space not too long, maybe about six months, but it was enough time to 
continue to build the community uh, to get a great following and then to eventually find a more permanent home. And then we offered our set or opened our second space within another wellness center in uh, January of 2019. So just this year. So it keeps growing and growing and um, it started off just so like free and intuitive and interesting and uh, not, definitely not to make money necessarily. I definitely value that of course, but um, at the time everything was moving so fast and I was trying to do things in a different way. So it was literally pay what you can, even $0 uh, for quite some time. After opening the, well, before opening the second space, we changed things around a little bit, but in joining this program, it was in an effort to really step things up and take it more seriously and serve our people in a, in a bigger capacity and more impactful capacity. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that story. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about, you know, the journey you were on in those, in those four years. I mean, I, I know that I like to call the first two to three years of studio ownership, the dark days of studio ownership, because it's so much work and it's so intense and it's, it's exhilarating actually. And, but especially when you're working so hard and working so many hours and so many uh, days for very little financial return at a certain point, it starts to actually feel a little bit out of integrity. And yeah. so I would, yeah. So I would love for you to just take us back a little bit to the summer you joined in. Uh, I remember the first week of July. So where were you at at that time before you were seeking out mentorship and like what brought you to that place of like, wait, I want to do this differently. I want to change this. Tell, bring us back to what you were going through in the spring and in the su early summer. Yeah, I was really tired, <laughs> just really, really tired. And for good reason. Um, I've shared a small part of my story, but the work I do is actually way bigger than that. I have a yoga festival private students, international yoga retreats. I've also completed a lot of my personal education during this time and then opened the second space this year. And I had just finished the Heartland Yoga Fest, which is a festival and co-founder of in June uh, for 2019. And I said to my husband, maybe a week before I reached out to you saying like, you know, maybe I need to focus on not business stuff for a while. <laughs> maybe I need to get a hobby or I don't know. Um, and then I realized that I needed to, let's say, solve the problem from a more foundational level. So starting with the business so that I would have the time and emotional freedom and energy that I was desiring so badly. Yeah, I remember that actually. Now you're taking me back mm -hmm. to our to our call where we were getting to know each other. And, you know, you had some specific financial goals that you were bringing into the program. But what, the thing that was most uh, memorable for me was really your desire for more spiritual freedom. Like, I really remember that about you, that like, you were like, my creativity, like, where is she? You know, mm -hmm. and, uh, and just wanting more connection with yourself in your practice and, and uh, so, yeah, I, I mean, for me, that hits all my, my spots. Like, so I get very excited when somebody wants to work at it from different levels like that, you know, uh, because it's true. I think I want to reflect that back to you that having more financial freedom gives us more spaciousness in our nervous system and in our schedules and in our, in our relationship with spirit and intuition. And so, yeah, it's actually one of the foundational things that we all need living in this world that we're living in. So yeah, that's interesting to hear you talk about that. So, you know, you got into the program and I, it was so fun for me to watch you move through the program because you're such a good student. Like you love learning and you know, you, you really want to show up to, to reap the benefits and, uh, can you take us through like some of the challenges of your time in the program and some of the, you know, really inevitably all of my mentees go through a stage in the program where they sort of hit their shit or just like, like get stuck a little bit and they have to move, they have to sort of wiggle through in some new ways and new ways to relate to themselves and their business. So can you speak to any of those times where that came up for you in, a, in our work together? Sure. It absolutely came up and to be honest, it didn't have much to do with the actual curriculum or the content that I felt pretty aligned with the whole time. 
uh, it was more maybe my shadow mirrored back at me, which is uh, I had two international trips planned during the 12 week program, as well as um, graduating my current class of trainees, which those were three major time sucks for me that there was really nothing I could do about. <laughs> um, and I don't want to call them time sucks. They're all very valuable experiences that I'm really glad that I and feel blessed that I was able to do. But I wasn't as able to be the model student that I love to be. Um, I wasn't able to necessarily show up in the way that I had pictured in my mind but I think, and we spoke about this, it's the exact medicine that I needed um, to have some more ease and grace with myself because I can tend to really beat myself up when I'm not living up to these very, very high expectations that I've set for myself. And also, this curriculum is available for life. It's and even just taking one step in it and like really milking it has the potential to be extremely impactful in many ways, but like financially in the most measurable way, I think. So I know that I can continue to take these lessons and keep milking them over time and refining what I'm doing. So it was, it was a hard lesson, but it was what I, what I needed. Probably not wanted, but he did at the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, that, you know, that's one of my secret superhero skills because I am a recovering perfectionist myself. So I love like weaving in with with recovering perfectionists, you know, and and uh, and really mirroring to them like, hey, you're not perfect, and look, you're still fucking amazing, and you're doing amazing work, you know. And and to me, that has been a very valuable lesson for me. So it's fun to see it reflected back in, in your experience too. Yeah, so, so you had some incredible financial results that are just totally worth sharing. My people will love to hear about this because I think a lot of us have a lot of stories that it is not possible to have quantum leap growth, financial growth in our studios, or maybe it's not even possible to be profitable, to actually have financial abundance in our studios. So bring us back to July, because July, you, you had some crazy results compared to what you had been making. And, and uh, I remember that you shared, uh, and I'd love for you to share here, like what, what changed for you in July, because it was such a remarkable sales month. So can you, can you tell us about that? Sure. Um, so the first part of the training really deals with mindset shifts, which was probably the thing I most desperately needed at the time. Um, beyond that, we got to look at previous year's um, numbers and things like that too. So I really got to see where I am and then like imagine beyond it, which is really cool. But we were um, kind of plateauing this year at about, Fifteen to sixteen thousand dollars in gross revenue a month, and July we brought in twenty nine thousand, which was our best month ever out of our four years. Um, almost by far, we had a pretty good month in January, but that's to be expected. Um, but yeah, that was it was really pretty mind blowing. <laughs> <laughs> it blows my mind also. I mean, sometimes when my trainees and my mentees have these results, I'm like, what? That is more than I ever could have imagined. But yeah, so so 29 versus your regular 15. Can you speak to like, if there was one or maybe two big mindset shifts of how you just reoriented to your business, to money, to uh, possibility, can you share with us one or two of those? Sure. I think one, just having an outlet to really talk through some of my blockages and look at them in black and white uh, made them all like a lot less scary and a lot less real. So having someone guide me through that process was um, one of the most valuable still th um, things still in, in the whole training process. 
but I think it's a, a mostly a belief that the sky is the limit, that this can be a profitable, pro profitable business and that by it being profitable and by myself stepping up as a leader in my business, um, those are positive things because it means that we are impacting our community in a bigger way which I had some blockages around money before and about um, what it means to be a boss. So I, I don't know if I can explain it in too much more detail than that, but there's that magic energy shift that happens. And I really do believe that the frequency that you're putting out attracts, attracts exactly more of that. Yeah. And, it, and I totally agree. And it's worth mentioning also that it's not like, Lauren had this one amazing month and then everything tanked. Like Lauren had very consistent, incredible results. I think uh, I remember you telling me that August was around 20 grand in sales, I believe. Mm -hmm. And then September, what did September end up being? We never talked about that. It ended up being about 20 as well, um, which wasn't quite to my, my goal that I had written out. However, compared to previous years, it was completely amazing. Um, September is typically our slowest month of the year. So, uh, yeah, that was mind-blowing to see that we were yeah. able to keep our numbers really consistent. And that was before we implemented any kind of price change as well. Right. Fantastic. And so mm -hmm. that was one of the things that we worked on in terms of strategy. Uh, we really worked on your price change. There was a couple things that we put into place. I know you hired some new folks on your team and that was a big deal too. Uh, can you just give us a tiny view into how's the price change going? Like are, are people freaking out? Is your team freaking out or has it gone relatively smoothly? It's gone very smoothly. We haven't had one complaint. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to me, that says so much about the value that you guys are bringing and your students undervalue of what you're offering. Like to me, it's like when, when there's a lot of complaints about a price change, it's, a, it's like a marketing issue for me in my head. It's like the, the students are actually aren't understanding the value of what they're getting. Because if they did understand that, they'd understand that we're all undercharging actually for the incredible value that we're giving. So that's, that's just a testament to you and your team. So, so tell us about your team. I know that was another really big thing that you were working with is uh, hiring some new team members, kind of like reorganizing people's responsibilities and offloading some of your heavy list of responsibilities. Tell us a little bit about how that went in the last few months. Sure. Um, so before I, I have an operations manager, studio manager, has been with me for about a year and a half and she's amazing. And then we had a social media person and then they um, delegate out like bookkeeping and things like that too, to outside businesses. Uh, but within the last three months, I hired a new marketing manager. So she's taken on uh, not only the social media posting, but some more bigger picture um, ideas about, about marketing and advertising for the studio um, who's just aligned so nicely with us uh, and so excited to, to be a part of the team and doing what she's doing. We're, we've been able to refine systems with the operations manager and also offload some of her duties onto uh, either work traders, the marketing manager. Uh, we also have a new facilities manager too. So she's, uh, she, the facilities manager also deals with our work trade team. So I was able to not only unload a few things from my to-do, um, but unload a few things from my managers to do, which was great because she's my right hand and I want to keep her really happy. And I also want her to be in her zone of genius, which isn't necessarily making sure we have enough toilet paper or something like that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, we talk about a lot in the Thriving Studio Owner Program, getting the right people in the right seats, doing the right things, you know, and that's really one of the magic keys to creating uh, more time freedom for everybody, more really turning on people's creativity and uh, you, what you just talked about, like putting them in their zone of genius, you know, or their, their zone of brilliance, which to me is, is what m makes leading an organization so much more fun 
is, is just looking and seeing like, Ooh, what are this, what is this person's gifts? And like, how can I get them really using their gifts, you know, to, to help me grow the business? So, so tell us like, what did that do for you, you know, in your nervous system, in your day-to-day -day schedule, having a more of a, more of a team of support? Yeah, it's been a tremendous help and I've had, um, a very big shift in energy. I feel I, we spoke about this a little bit earlier, but I don't know the right word. I'd say a little bit more non-attached and not, and not in a bad way at all, but in the most yogic way, I don't feel as ruffled by what's going on on the day to day because I know that our systems are in place to handle it and that I don't need to attend to every detail of what's going on because I have great people who are excited about doing what they're doing and who who are taking care of that beautifully and only come to me you know at last resort <laughs> in certain ways or just for advice or direction um so really I, I feel like I was you talk about um kind of the different levels of ownership and what your role is and how it changes over time and I felt like before the training I was really stepping into the leadership role still with some managerial duties and now I definitely feel more settled into just the role of the leader and I can keep the big picture in mind and also just have a lot of faith that everything is rolling how it's supposed to. Um, so I feel a lot more, I just feel less, less tension in my body, uh, less anxiety, and I have more space for, for life beyond business ownership, which exists. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know. I mean, I, 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 I remember the days where it didn't feel like that for me. It didn't feel like there was really anything. I was living and breathing my business for those first several years. And I know you've shared with me that was true. So can you give us a little view into just like, what is life like beyond, beyond business? Like, uh, what are you able to do now or even consider now that your business isn't this like all consuming beast? Um, definitely a few things. One is like, and this is maybe sounds silly, but it was something that also occurred simultaneously with doing this, this training. I started really stepping into my personal practice more and not just yoga, but other forms of movement that I enjoy. I think I've walked most days, 10,000 steps or more, like really coinciding with, like for the last three months, so coinciding with uh, doing this program uh, and spending a lot more time in nature. Um, for anyone who needs a little more background, my husband is also a business owner in a very different business. He owns a restaurant. So we really, really have been in the last few years so caught up in that being the totality of our lives um but like the other night and this has happened like less times than i can count on one hand in our relationship we stayed up till free in the morning talking <laughs> just talking which is like and not about business which was so cool so i feel like i've gotten a chance to really reconnect with him uh and spend more time with my family and then think about the future a bit more beyond what I'm thinking about for my business. That's still a part of it too, but I feel like I'm able to breathe a little bit more and think about what I want from the other aspects of my life. Oh, that is just so amazing. <laughs> I love hearing that story, Lauren. I never stay up that late talking to my husband, so I really appreciate that. I, mean, I don't even talk to my husband that much, honestly, now that we have kids. So, I mean, I, to me, like, if there was even no other result other than that is like more connection with someone that you love, like that to me is, is really what, you know, what's possible with, with owning your own business. You know, that's what we're all looking for is like that kind of freedom and that ability, you know, financial freedom, time freedom, like nervous system freedom, where you're not like reporting to anyone else, you know, but you get to be more present in your life. So, but I think most of us miss that. Like we, we think that's what we're getting into. And then it, it, a small business just like is, has its own, uh, its own sort of trajectory, you know, that it takes us on. So yeah, that's, that's super beautiful. 
So is there anything that you would share or say to a potential studio owner? You know, my main audience who watches these interviews are people who are really struggling in their studio business and their wellness business. Just like you and I, they really want to have a high level of impact on their community. They want to be of service. And yet they're really struggling financially, emotionally, mentally, and even spiritually. So, you know, for those folks who are, who feel like they want more support and more business mentorship, but they're afraid, what, what would you say to them? I would say to go back and think about why you started your business in the first place. And that, like I shared my story earlier about sort of the intuitive pull to come into it. It didn't even feel like a decision in a lot of ways. It just felt like this opportunity I was stepping into. I think going back to that and finding that magic again, uh, it's almost like reigniting a, a marriage or something like that. And clearing out all of the clutter that comes with the day-to-day -day decisions and relationships and just sticky energy that can happen uh, or jadedness maybe or uh, negative thought patterns that can happen over, over time. I think really digging deep and getting back to that, that magic and in that magic, the self-trust, that trust in the intuition, that trust that you're serving your higher purpose. Um, is reason enough to do that and it's worth every penny um, and every every moment of time that you spend receiving this re this support um, and not only not only is it something to improve your business it improves the quality of your life and I think it's something that people deserve to do for themselves and that their community deserves too because the community deserves a leader who is intentional and clear and intuitive and their best selves. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah, I've been, I've been really feeling into this truth in the last few months that the yoga medicine is for me also, like it's also for me to uptake. And so I think for years, you know, I got my tastes of healing, you know, physically and spiritually, and I immediately just turned like, how can I help? You know, how can I do this for my, anyone who's willing to be my student, you know? And then in the last like couple of years, I've just had this realization like, oh, this is for me to uptake also. And I don't have to sacrifice myself, you know, and my financial well-being and my time and my energy, my family, my relationships. So thank you for sharing that. You're so wise. I always yeah. love hearing your, your take on things, Lauren. Uh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. You know, I mean, you, I, you've been just such a pleasure to work with and I hope that we can work together again in one of my graduate programs sometime in the future. But I, I just am very inspired by you and your, your level of belief in yourself is really remarkable. And your vision, like what you just talked about, you have, you, you have a big vision. And, and I think that's part of what, uh, I'm sure that's part of what has carried you through the dark days of studio ownership is just that like powerful vision of how you want to show up in the world and, and how you want to be of support to your community. So, so thank you for being you and doing what you do. And thank you. Yeah, thank you. And mm -hmm. could you speak to our, our folks about if they are in town in Kansas City, how they can find you or the, do you want to give them your social media or your website? How can they find you guys and come get a taste of your offerings? Sure. You can find us on Instagram or Facebook as Karma Tribe Yoga KC. I'm also on Instagram as Lauren LaDuke Yoga. And our website is karmatribeyoga.org. And we have really cool workshops and classes and outside events happening all the time. So there's, there's always something you can catch no matter when you come into town. Awesome. I can't wait to come into town and take your class and take you out for coffee. So for those of you guys who are interested in working with me as your mentor, I'll put the link to my calendar in the comments. Let's set up a free business breakthrough call, which is exactly the call that Lauren and I had back in July to find out what it is that you're wanting of your business and what's possible for you in the next 90 days. And uh, yeah, grab a spot on my calendar. I would love to connect with you and find out if we're well aligned 
to work together. And if, if we both agree that we feel like it's the right fit, I may ask you to be one of the mentees I take on this month. So thank you everybody for joining. Thank you, Lauren, for thank all you so much, Kiki. Uh, my pleasure and have a great day, everybody. Take care.